Okay, welcome. It's Tani from Snaffle Travel. Tonight, I'd like to introduce Helen Christie from New Zealand. Helen's an event official who's officiated at five Olympic Games and two World Equestrian Games, as well as many other events. So welcome, Helen. Oh, thanks, Tania. It's, um, it's a first for me doing things like this, so bear with me. <laughs> no, you'll be great. So if anyone's got any questions or comments, um, just put, put them in the comments below. And at the end, I'll um, go through them and ask. So, um, Helen, um, tell us about your equestrian background. Um, well, I was one of those annoying kids whose parents asked me every Christmas, what did I want? And I only ever wrote pony, so, and they weren't horsey. So I pestered and pestered. And I think I was 12 when I got my first pony because I had to do everything myself. But I sometimes think that makes you more determined to stick with it. So. Um, I was lucky enough to get a pony and then a second sold one and got the other and then I ended up with a four-year-old very unsuitable mainly thoroughbred horse that happened to be good enough to take me up to four star in England where I lived um, so I, that's how I started and I had a you know I, I was just had a really fortunate childhood of non-horsey parents supporting me really yeah, I know, great. Yeah, no, it's, yeah, no, good. So um, how did you get involved as an event official? Um, well, well, when I, I was, I probably did my first official job at an event when I was 18. And um, we had a local horse trial in Northampton, which um, I couldn't ride at because my horse had upgraded out of that level. He was intermediate and it only went to novice. So I ended up being secretary of that or assistant secretary of that event when I was only 18. But I think once I got to New Zealand, which is a whole another story, um, my horse I did sell and he funded my trip to New Zealand. Um, but we were, we're farming here. So I decided after some time that we'd have an event at home and my husband bless him um, built the cross country and I got officials to come and help and it was a, a NZEF one so it was quite recognized but I, I had all these officials travel to home so I sort of felt obliged to go back and do some dressage judging to repay them and and then things just started as they do the things I, I'd never intended to do much but you know I went up to Christchurch um, which is still in the South Island where I live um, and thought that was amazing and then somebody asked me to Taupo and I thought that was just the ultimate and then it's just grown from there and I think probably my first overseas trip was to Sydney to the Olympics and and I thought that was the pinnacle of my career and it's just gone on and on really. And now it's what I do for my sport and my hobby. So I'm really lucky I can do something I love. So, yeah. Yeah, you can. That's great. Yeah. So Sydney was your first Olympics? Um, yes, yeah, Sydney was. I mean, I, I was stewarding at Sydney, but I, I'd sort of applied and a bit left field and not really hoping for much. And in those days, you got letters. It wasn't emails or anything. So everything took time and, and you had to send another letter back and they'd, they'd then reply to you. And it turned out I, I was an FEI official there, which was, was way beyond my wildest dreams and met loads of cool people there. And it sort of started <laughs> the, the bug. Yeah, great. Yeah. So you've been asked to be an official at the uh, uh, Chief Eventing Steward at the um, Tokyo Olympics um, next year. Tell us what that involves. Um, well, it's, I mean, it's a massive honour, but when I was actually asked by, by Captain Norinda, who's the Olympic person in the FEI, which is our world body, I sort of said, oh, I'd rather be judging. <laughs> which wasn't the reply she expected me to give but anyway I um I was appointed the chief steward and there's probably about 50 stewards um that are there for the equestrian and I'm doing the, the eventing side of that which has got its a few interesting things because the cross country isn't where the dressage and jumping is and um 
but it's most of it's HR sort of stuff. It's blending people and working as a team. And I might be the only appointed FEI chief steward for eventing that never gets to do it because um, we're carrying on that it's going to happen. But you know, I mean, who knows in this crazy world we're living in at the moment? We've just got to keep keep trying and see what happens. Yeah, and I know it's 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 hard. There's so many events being cancelled leading up to December. Yeah. So, well, I haven't so. left the country this year. I mean, it's I've had had a lovely time because I I mean, New Zealand's got loads of things to do, but I I haven't left New Zealand. I haven't even I got my passport out to do it for a thing for the farm for an application, and realised I hadn't actually used it all year, which is terrible. But at least mine's still current. My husband's had run out. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So for those that have just tuned in, I'm talking to Helen Christie. Um, and if you've got any questions, just leave them in the comments below. Um, so you've been involved in two World Equestrian Games in France and um, Tryon in the US. How does, and also obviously five Olympics, how do the the World Equestrian Games and the Olympics compare? Like, because with the Olympics, you have um, other competitors as well. So how sort of it's... Yeah. Um, they're both, uh, I mean, at the end of the day, they're horse shows somewhere. But um, I have actually done three WEGs, which I'd forgotten. I was in Kentucky WEG as well in ah, right, 20, yeah. 2010. Um, but the Olympics is, I guess, I mean, riders, everybody knows about the Olympics. I mean, it's a big deal to family, people I know, because everybody tunes into an Olympic Games. And if New Zealand or in your case, Australia do well, everybody, eventing's sort of recognised around the world because we've actually won medals. Both, both countries have done very well in it. Um, whereas world championships are more our... Ah, Thing, aren't they you know the horsey people's thing mm. and and they especially in Kentucky because all the disciplines were really close and all on the same venue and that was amazing because you had Mark Todd but you had among eating in the canteen with the para riders you know it was it's I mean it's very humbling it's very interesting because you know we'd go along and watch the raining and things that you'd never normally watch so, um, I mean, they're just quite, just quite different competitions. I mean, when we were in Hong Kong, which was the Beijing Olympics, it was as if we weren't at an Olympics because you weren't, the, there weren't the other athletes, the other yeah. sports and things. So, I mean, that's a real treat. And I know for the riders when they're in the Olympic Village and, and meeting, um, you know, famous, famous athletes and runners or tennis mm. players or, I mean, it's, that's a big thrill, um, but it's, I think it's good for the sport to have the Olympics, but probably our pinnacle of achievements are, are world championships are really cool too. So I just take, I, I'm grateful for anything anybody asks me to. I mean, it's, yeah. it's all amazing. <laughs> so yeah, they're, they're, they're yeah, all great. Everything's good. Because they say too, like at the Olympics, they don't have the shops, whereas at the World Equestrian Games, there's loads yeah. of equestrian shops and things to do. I know. Yeah. And look, I mean, I, it sounds a bit blasé. I mean, when I went to Sydney, going to the opening ceremony was amazing. And we all queued up, as everybody did at the RM Williams belts that you could get. But there were, wasn't much merchandise. Um, when you go to a WEG, there is the shopping. And actually, I'm wearing a necklace now that I bought for myself for my 50th birthday at WEG in 2010, so you can work out how old I am. Um, but I'm, I've just about given up going shopping now because, A, the higher up the ladder you go, the less time you get. <laughs> You're too busy working. Um, but, yeah, I mean, they're just different. I mean, they are what they are and they're different. But and and trying to pick one out of all of them would be impossible but i suppose sydney was amazing when when anything's your first thing it is amazing but then you think well athens was pretty cool because it was the home of the place um yeah and london was amazing i mean they all are they're all yeah. I, I i could get excited about going to 
a pony club show down the road. So I'm, I'm not, I'm not that hard to please. <laughs> so how many, um, normally, how many times a year would you travel overseas to an event? Oh gosh, I'd probably, oh, between 10 and 15 times a year. Um, wow. It depends. Sometimes if you get a championship, you, you're required to go to a test event or a, go to the venue um, prior to that. And sometimes if you've been appointed a championship in a region, then the other countries want you there to judge because that's more with the judging because they want to get their riders in front of that judge. Um, but I, and the wonderful thing is you don't know what you're going to do until next year. I, I, you start knowing from about now to the end of the year what invitations you're getting for next year. And, and there's no rhyme or reason who asks you. It's, it's, it's very diverse. And, um, the career path is quite hard because you can't plan it because you have to wait till the invitations come. So it's, it's unlike a yeah. career in the job world. It's, it's just a lot of luck, really. <laughs> yeah. Oh, great. Um, so do you have special training in clinics that you need to attend regularly or? Um, yeah, yeah. To, to, you, you do a seminar every three years for the FEI. Um, there's a lot of online testing that's being developed at the moment through the FEI. Um, but before you do FEI stuff, you've got to keep all your national accreditations current. So um, I'm actually, um, I'm a cross country designer. I'm a TD, a steward and a judge. And of course with eventing, you have to, um, you have to, if you're judging eventing, you have to keep very current with your dressage judging. So I do a lot of dressage judging in between going to eventing events. Um, so that's sort of a, a whole thing in itself, really. And um, tell us about the roles of like a technical delegate, the judges, event stewards, and the roles at major equestrian events. Sort of explain that um, a little bit. Well, the TD is the technical delegate, and they basically go to the site and work with the organising committee and way before you even put a cross country course out, they'll make sure that the venue is suitable, the access is suitable, and then they'll work with the course designer on where the cross country will go. But they also have to know that there's going to be enough lose, which um, if you were at WEG in, in Normandy, <laughs> um, that yeah, proved right. a little tricky. Um, and they also have to help with um, the organising committee working at contingency plans if it rains a lot or, um, you know, if the course has to be changed or whatever. Um, so the technical delegates there to make sure everything's technically organised with the organising committee. Um, the, then the officials start arriving when the event happens and the technical delegate is the person that um, is the rider's advocate. He makes sure everything's within the rules and then hands over each phase to the judges, which is the ground jury, who they work with vets to make sure the horses are sound at the trot-ups. Then the ground jury will judge the horses in the dressage. They oversee the cross country and then the trot-up and show jumping. But in the meantime, that, that sort of field of play stuff that the judges are uh adjudicating over but at all other times there's a team of stewards um who are making sure the welfare of the horse is taken care of that there's no funny stuff going on in the stables they work closely with the vets on welfare issues but they also look after the practice areas and make sure everybody's using correct gear within the rules and there's no abuse or no use of things like that, you know, are not conducive to the competition. So, mm -hmm. but the whole thing has to be a team effort to put the show on the road, really. And nobody can work without the other. Um, and apart from dressage judging and instant decisions, like when you're show jump judging, everything else, you can consult rule books and you can discuss things. So most things don't have to be rushed, you know, decisions don't have to be rushed. 
and and of course i mean a lot of the competitors now are on multi-million dollar horses and in business so it's actually become a really serious and professional thing to to be an official whereas i think in the older days it, there was a lot of fun but it was also the case with the riders and um, the whole thing's become very serious with you know you have to have plans and crisis management yeah. meetings and um yeah so it's it's sort of grown up a lot over the years and become a serious task yeah yeah no you can see that you know with some of the horses that you see yeah it's amazing um what countries have you been to as an event official Do you um know? well I'm not quite sure how many continents there are in the world. You're a travel agent, but I've been to uh, I've been to South America and North America, um, which is I mean I've officiated in Canada and America and Mexico and Brazil, and then I've I've been in Europe and Britain, of course, and Germany and France are all big big eventing countries, um, but I've also been to Hungary and smaller countries. Um, and then in Africa, I've been to South Africa. Oh, I was meant wow. to be going to Zimbabwe this year to do two events, and sadly, two, three days before I was due to go there, I had to pull the pin. Um, and I've also worked, Australia and New Zealand are sort of classed with um, Asia, and of course, Australia and New Zealand a lot, but I've also worked in Indonesia, uh, Japan um and thailand actually oh, so they do event in in countries that you probably wouldn't think of initially that that's an event in country so i've been really lucky i've been i've been lots of places so it is it is amazing but it's also amazing that we use the same rules wherever you go in the world so by moving officials around you should have the same standards which is is a good thing yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, great. So you must meet some interesting people and make friends from all over the world. Tell us some of your favourite moments. Gosh, um, it, it's, a, it's a very strange thing because you work with people. When you go to an event, you're there for almost a week. So you make really good friends and from all different countries. And, and you can get an invitation to Japan, say, and find out you're judging with somebody from Australia and somebody from Holland that you haven't seen for a year or more. Um, so you get lots of get togethers and, and um, but the, the biggest thing is working with the local people because then you experience their countries with the local people rather than a tourist. So, you know, when you go to Japan, I've got really cool mates in Japan um, and then they'll come to an event in, say, Australia or New Zealand. So you can sort of look after them and, and show them around there. So, and it's quite good. It doesn't always happen to, to have a few extra days so you can experience some of the culture or the, or the touristy thing. Otherwise, you fly in and you're at a horse show and you fly out and you really don't know what country you've been in. Um, yeah. But I've met some amazing people and, and yes, I've seen some great things because of the sport or, or on top of the sport, if you like. So I've been really lucky. And do you have a favourite event that you like to... Oh, I knew you'd ask that. <laughs> well, this is mainly Australian. <laughs> and I, I guess for me, being asked to judge at Adelaide was amazing because it's the, the highest level. Um, so, and you're made to feel like a real princess in Adelaide, you looked after really well and um, I mean it is amazing because of the setting in the parkland and stuff. Yeah, um, it is pretty. Wallaby Hill is a, a, another amazing event um, and if you've never been there it's just stunning, the presentation mm. and the, the property uh, and the generosity of the owners is amazing. But then you go to Melbourne and I'm always so impressed about how many people um, go to events and to watch and stuff. You know, so Melbourne, you have a different thing because there's, there's quite big crowds in Melbourne. Um, I love going to Albury, Albury-Wodonga, um, 
because that was the first ever event I officiated at overseas. So that's really yeah. cool. Um, and then I've got ones like there's one in Western Australia at Fairbridge that the committee's amazingly hard working and, and Ballarat as well is you know and you just I just love working with these people um there's one this weekend I should have been going to in um, Equestriad which is Camden in New South Wales and the committee there are just brilliant and 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 I I just feel like I belong you know they they make you so welcome so I mean they're Australian ones so you can imagine it's really cool going to Mickey in Japan or I went mm. twice to um, Tai Polo last year which is just out of um, well it's it's near um, Pattaya uh, in Thailand and I mean hey um, anywhere anywhere is cool and there's loads of local ones in New Zealand I mean I think it's the people that just yeah. make make things um, yeah really cool so i'm spoiled um i wouldn't dare pick one and i haven't i haven't judged at badminton or burley or any of those yet i sort of had a little dabble i shadow judged at kentucky and that was really cool so there's still loads of things that you know that i'd like to do but i mean if if it stopped tomorrow i'd feel incredibly fortunate at the amount i have done so whatever <laughs> it's it, they're all cool the New Zealand Horse of the Year, I went there this year and I thought that was pretty good. It's amazing, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, the show is so big. Very and friendly and everything's there, like the whole, yeah. and it's all well, like... I mean, and it's been, I've been involved with the Horse of the Year. The girl, um, Erica runs it, um, the eventing part of it, and she's amazing. And it's it's been, I wouldn't say a battle, but um, there's been people that would have, prefer that the eventing wasn't there because as you've seen it goes through every ring and the show has to stop but the crowd seem to really love it and um the cross country prior is is always a worry because you've got to move things to get the whole thing working but but people have made it happen and it is it's an amazing showpiece for the sport um amongst all the other sports equestrian sports going on so it's a really cool one for people you know if you're visiting from australia it's a cool one to take people to watch at because there's so much to see and the shopping's quite good there too isn't yeah, it yeah no there's loads of shops it was great yeah. it was, it's sort of like a melbourne show but you haven't got all the the fair you know the what do you call it the ferris wheel and all the things yeah. that distract the horses exactly. so no have you been to Arkham? Ar Arkham, yes. oh God, the Arkham is like, it's like Mecca. Everybody has to go there once in their life, don't they? And and it's like a New Zealand version of Arkham, dare I say that. That's, <laughs> But it is, you know, it's, it's and it's got more than Arkham. It's got, got showing and all sorts of other stuff as well. So um, I forgot about Arkham. Arkham is something else, isn't it? It's, mm. it's an amazing, amazing. Yeah, I've show. taken about three or four groups there now yeah, yeah. go every year it's wonderful so yeah. um you're from southland new zealand um tell us about your home life and what you get up to when you're not traveling um well i didn't really travel a lot until the kids i've got two children bill and katie who are now married and i've got grandchildren so that's that's a massive attraction to be at home um but I didn't travel a lot until they'd finished school and were independent. But I have got the most patient husband ever, who's built cross country jumps. We we host hunts at home. Um, we we've had a one day event at home, which we don't now. But um, and it's in a really rural horsey area. And you sort of I was involved with play group and I was on a chairman of the board of trustees for a while. And I'm a, on the board of the local vet um, vet group, um, so I'm I'm quite involved with everything there. Oh, I'm a first responder, and my husband and son are firemen. So, yeah, and and every sport um, we're we're involved with the tennis and the rugby and the dog trials and everything. And it's in a tiny little area, but it's so cool, and it's it's a really good community. So, I love being at home, contrary to what most people think. Um, and my husband is patient because he, he he goes off and plays golf, and he his friends 
envy him because he hasn't got a nagging wife at home most of the time because I'm away doing my thing. But we have just had five weeks white baiting over on the West Coast, so um, together, which he was slightly alarmed about, but um, that's been really good fun. So, yeah, we're pretty lucky. We have a pretty charmed life. Um, but, you know, we've worked hard, but we're sort of, I'm, I'm enjoying grandkids at the moment. So, yeah. yeah, and they don't really need me on the farm anymore. So <laughs> I, I'm involved, but I don't have to get out there and do the work I used to do. So it's, it's pretty lucky. Yeah, great. I've just got some photos I'll share. I'll just bring up the slideshow. I'll um, put my, my glasses on. <laughs> and wait a minute. Oh dear, that's at Melbourne. That was fun. That was last year at Melbourne. Yeah, that's a great jump, isn't it? Oh, they've got such a good committee there. That's brilliant. And and the setting in, in the, you know, Werribee there is just amazing. It's really, really uh, quite British. <laughs> There's Melbourne oh, okay. again. <laughs> oh, some good faces there. Oh, I just love seeing everybody. That's really cool. It's Adelaide. Oh, yeah. Oh, God, I look skinny in that one on the left. I think it's squashed out. That's good. Um, oh, yeah, that, it's such an honour to be able to go there. And it's so good for the Southern Hemisphere to have a five-star event. I mean, we're mm. really lucky. We've just got to fight to keep it. Yeah. Such a good group there. Gosh, it was fun. It was Warwick. Oh, that's in Queensland, yeah. Yes. That's a while ago. Oh, yes. I can't believe how lucky I am to go to all these nice places yeah. with such good people. And that was Bromont, oh, Bromont. Canada. Mm. Yeah, I've been lucky enough to go to Bromont a lot and um, Sue Ockerden runs that event. She is just amazing. She's such a good, good girl. And um, yeah, Bromont is a fantastic event. It's in, And the Americans love going up to Canada. So... We're really lucky to go there. I was actually going to teach a, a steward seminar there this year, which of course with COVID hasn't happened, sadly, but no, it's great. And I always feel really privileged when Sue asks us because it's, yeah, it's a real, very cool event. So would that have been just before, because they were going to host the World Equestrian Games instead of try on. Was yes, that just it was before that? They, I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I'd been there quite a lot before that and was involved when they had the launch of what they were going to do and slightly involved when they were trying to raise the funds to do it. But um, it was, it proved, I mean, I, I don't know the ins and outs, but it would have been lovely to have gone there. But um, mm. but going to Tryon, I mean, how Tryon picked up and, and got going, what they got going in that time frame was absolutely incredible because it was a building site even when we arrived for the actual event and and the actual event i think came off really well yeah oh, Blair, blair's very cool blair's yeah it's got the gorgeous yeah castle i'm we were visiting friends in perth and we went through the castle it's beautiful yes and we we're lucky we stay um i have stayed further on the estate but most of the time I've been there we've stayed in um what's the old um I can't remember what they call it but it was like the farm manager's house which was close to the castle mm -hmm. and you have a reception in the castle and the first time I went they actually had the trot up in the courtyard of the castle which is oh, lovely is, yeah, is really gorgeous yeah. and yeah. they've done a massive amount of work there to, to put the event on and Actually, the shopping's really good there too. It's amazing. Mm. Good people. Oh, London. That was that was pretty cool. That was funny. I actually ended up being able to bit check there with Jan, the girl that's I'm um, pictured with. Um, but it only happened at the last minute because Elizabeth, the dressage steward, wasn't very well, and they they called in a, what, another friend who she actually she suggested that I do it because she was doing the logos or something and so I ended up um, doing the bit checks with Janet and that was great because we got to watch every test um, and still do our job and yeah we had really good good seats there that was great yeah that is a prize of yeah great yes, yes. No, that was lovely 
Oh, that was that was after we, when New Zealand got a bronze medal in London, they celebrated more than um, more than the, the others that got the silver, the gold and, and silver. But that was that was pretty special because I've known Jock right from the beginning, and um, yeah. yeah, and very good for Francis actually because the lady Francis Stead owns a lot of horses that are represented New Zealand, so it was really cool that she um, she got to be part of it. Yeah. And there's Rio. Rio was cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. Gosh. Oh, Clark was so, the New Zealanders were really unlucky not to get a medal there, but, but at least our Aussie mates got one. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, Rio was fun and they did an amazing job because everybody was very negative about Rio and that it wasn't, you know, wasn't going to be very, very well organised. But the equestrian was fantastic, I thought. Um, and a super venue and yeah. Do you get and to keep all your uniforms in that? Because you have yes. different... I've got a wardrobe full of jackets, which I never wear again. The t-shirts I wear at home on the farm. Um, and I usually give one or two to be auctioned off. Um, and there's occasionally things like shorts that I really like, and then I wear, wear the heck out of them. Um, I was wearing, I went for a bike ride one day along the Clutha River and and forgot I had a London Olympic t-shirt and I was talking to these people and you could see they were looking at me slightly oddly and and then I realised they said oh did you ride a bike at the London Olympics <laughs> <laughs> and I said well no that's quite unlikely <laughs> um, but yeah so I, I wear them at home I don't I tend not to wear them at other events I think that looks a little bit swanky but yeah. Um, there is some really, you get given a lot of stuff. Mm. Oh, that was in South Africa. Oh gosh, that event is amazing. It's a, a place called Kurland, which is on the, on the drive between the garden route between Cape oh. Town and um, Port Elizabeth. But that's a polo venue. I mean, isn't it outstanding? It's yeah. just, just a treat. And instead of seeing kangaroos on the cross country, you see these troops of baboons and there's monkeys on the on the veranda and yeah so that was that was a real um education for me going there it was very cool we stayed in a hotel in zambia and we if you sat out on the outer you had to watch the monkeys they used to jump off the roof and grab your toast <laughs> yeah no it was, it's and the people there are so keen to to do things and get it right and 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 it's really cool to go there because some of them have come to us and I've worked with them at other events and one one lady I met there was working at Tryon so you know the world sort of moves around which this blooming covid stopped all that at the moment yeah. but um that's New oh, Zealand. That's of the year, yeah, that's very cool. Horse of the year, um, yeah. Horse of the year is brilliant, and there's some really good people that come and help there because it's it's just tricky enough from an organising point of view. But it's um it's a the riders love it because they get to expose horses to a crowd, which um you know they you wouldn't mm. often get in New Zealand. Um, mm. so it's actually yeah, the, it's really good and it's part of the horse's education going there that's very good that is cheer oh, yeah. i can i got your photo yeah, that's, um, that's the mecca isn't it of the of the world <laughs> have you have you officiated there or you've just been there as a spectator um, no i've been there i've been there twice and the first time my daughter was actually stewarding and i went with her <laughs> um and a, a quite a famous australian rider was very kind and um he got me accreditation because he can't go to arkin and not have accreditation so i was really lucky the first time i got to watch most of the time katie worked and the second time i was in a build up to um it was a build up to try on and i was actually asked to go and steward and be part of the team there so that was cool as well um but it is it's just something else isn't it it's just just you've got to go there everybody has to go once in their lifetime and it's amazing like all the ladies and that they wear their high heels and their oh, know, smart like dresses and yeah definitely i i was 
blown away about well the germs are terribly smart anyway but it was like going out to the theater in the evening and things and and that was what was really cool with the eventing that you had the eventing but you also had all the fun of of the jumping and the, those crazy things they do i was there the year that um shane and berto were all tied up doing um doing a celebrity ride and drive and things yeah and that, in the main yeah. arena yeah i think i was there yeah. too yeah 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 that was that was quite cool and when when you know people it's fun yeah. oh this was um this was at the um asian championships this year in um in thailand it was such a good trip we did we weren't very worked hard because we only had about 12 horses so but i mean in that lineup there's an indian assistant td Prabhu, and then there's the the td was from poland um i was working with christian landoff and and another christian who were from austria and switzerland and gosh who else oh the course designer he was from ireland he's one of the fell boys from bell and dennis can he brought somebody with him so it was so international and zerwin's there who was the that he's actually um, Filipino, but works in Thailand. So it was a very international event and they flew in horses to compete there. Um, it was just an incredible experience. It was very, very um, professionally done. Yeah, no, that was, gosh, what great memories. I love this. Oh, that's the steward team in Normandy, yes. Yeah. And you look at that team, I mean, there's people there from Brazil, France, Germany, England, Poland, Australia. Chris Wallace is there, if anybody's Australian listening. Um, yeah, America, Ireland. I mean, it's such a cool mixture of people. And that's how you make all these friends everywhere. It's mm. cool. Notice a lot of them have got boots on. I wonder why. <laughs> it was wet, <laughs> wasn't it? It was yeah. it was damp, yes, yeah, it was a bit damp, but um, it's dry. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. We now, stayed in that house for the yeah, festival, we, which was, was amazing. Because <laughs> we we were walking past, because we you know we went. Um, I took a group there, and we're thinking, oh wow, look at those houses. Mm. <laughs> yeah, and well, we I stayed think, there. I think that picture on the left is the test event um because martin was the um td who's there and that was out on the course early on um and i think the assistant td was from brazil but yeah so and janice was the chief steward who's in the photo with us and that was and i was her assistant but we we got so well looked after um it was it was very cool to go to the test event because you can tell from the there's no leaves on the trees in the photo on the left Oh, the one yes. on the right is actually at the event. So mm -hmm. um, the but jumps the are really was, good. Oh well, the work that was done in in a year or less than a year was was nothing short of amazing. It was just just amazing. Mm. Yeah. Cool. Oh yeah, trying again. Research. I know. <laughs> I just look at that and think, how did that ever get built? Oh yeah, that's in um, in Tryon too. It is amazing that it looks so good because it was a building site two weeks before. Um, yeah. Yeah, I, I don't think I, I, even on the day we got there, a lot of things weren't finished. Yeah. Was, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it amazing. Was, um, it was amazing. There were things going up in front of our eyes. It was quite amazing and as a as an eventing um group of stewards we we were really chuffed that i think we were just about the first sport to get finished because the dressage lost their last day and the endurance sort of had their problems so we were quite relieved and excited to actually get to the show jumping especially after we had to have that day off in the middle mm. oh, the hurricane <laughs> yeah yeah it was um yeah. Oh, and that was the test event. Tokyo. This, this might be the test event for the, oh God, I hope it happens for the event that might not happen. But, um, and look, you know, in that group, they're mostly Japanese, such good people. We've also got Lawrence is from Guatemala and Tom's from Thailand. And um, who else is there? Oh, Susan from New Zealand. Um, 
so yes other than that they're they're all from japan and gosh they so want it they're, they've done so mm. much hard work we shall see we shall see now, who's this little chap <laughs> that's my oldest grandson lucky at home and gorgeous. that's buttercup. <laughs> that's buttercup. buttercup yeah that's lovely oh, that's very yeah. cool <laughs> that's funny you picked that photo oh this looks gorgeous yeah he and is. then the beautiful view oh, is this your is. farm that's our farm i think i took that in covid um gosh i mean covid was the most extraordinary time but it, we actually had a lovely time because we just stayed at home and it was great yeah that's us green yeah. grass oh that's lovely oh you picked them really well fancy yeah. that so yeah. helen um we'd like to thank you for giving up your time and um, sharing your amazing photos and your journey with us. Um, it's been oh, great hearing your story. Well, it's nice talking about it because it just has made me realise how flipping lucky I am. Um, yeah, but yeah. Um, it's, yeah, it's good to share it. And gosh, if anybody ever is interested in becoming an official or helping at events, you know, tell them to give us a they'll find me on Facebook or something or just go to their local um, event and, and offer to help because eventing is the worst thing for manpower. I mean, it takes so many people to run an event. Um, and, you know, you don't have to be very horsey to be able to come and, and help in some way, one way or another. So, yeah, we love seeing people. <laughs> so thank you. It's great. Yeah. So um, next week I'll be talking about Iceland as a destination providing some information and photos um, for those dreaming of going to Iceland when we can travel again. So thank you yeah. and um, I'll see you next week. Cool. Yeah, there's I'm no... I'm going to go to Iceland. Thanks, Tania. Yeah. <laughs> cool.